Winston Churchill once said, never give in, never give in, never, never, never. I joined the Marine Corps during my second year of law school and I went on to practice in the Marine Corps as a criminal defense counsel and a criminal prosecutor. But when I deployed to Iraq in the fall of 2006, it wasn't in the role of a JAG officer. In the Marine Corps, all the officers learn the basics of many different positions. So I volunteered for the deployment as a civil affairs team leader. I had the honor of leading a small team of eight Marines and Navy corpsmen, and we were attached to a Marine infantry battalion located in Al Anbar province, halfway between the towns of Fallujah and Ramadi. On October 18, 2006, we were conducting one more of our combat patrols, and we got to an area near one of our forward operating bases. This is our team, and this is the area where we were, we were patrolling. We got to an area where we knew an enemy sniper was operating because he had already killed a few of our Marines. Earlier in the day, we had made several stops, and I noticed during one of those stops that the reporter who was with us was standing very still. And that's a terrible idea if you know a sniper may be targeting you. So I said to him at the next stop when we got, when we got out of the Humvee and started walking away, I said, hey, Jay, you got to move quicker here. Don't forget about that sniper. We don't want you to get hurt. He told me later that based on that, he took a big step forward. And a split second later, a, round came, a bullet came in right where his head had been and hit the wall between us. Before I could react, the next bullet hit me behind the left ear and exploded out of the front of my mouth causing incredible damage along the way. But fortunately for me, Corman George Grant is an incredible young man. We've grown quite close over the last few years, and we've gone to many events together, and, and we're good friends. Even though blood was pouring out of my skull and what was left in my face, George was somehow able to perform rescue breathing on me, and then he cut out my throat and performed an emergency trachea on me so I wouldn't drown my own blood. In the face of overwhelming adversity and with complete disregard for his own life, George is able to focus solely on me and keep me alive. In fact, George did such a perfect job on that tracheotomy that my plastic surgeon at the Naval Hospital back in the States told me he thought another surgeon had performed it. Now keep in mind, George was only 25 years old at the time. And keep in mind that George had never performed that type of surgery on a human being before. He had done it once in a controlled training environment for Navy corpsmen out at Camp Pendleton, California. And he performed that surgery on a pig. And I don't know what that says about me, but that pig survived. <laughs> I'm still here, so it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. So why am I up here today in front of you? I can't see out of my left eye. I can't run anymore because the doctors removed bones from my legs and from my hip to use in reconstructing my upper and lower jaw. I also am missing most of my teeth and the end of my tongue, and as you can tell, I can't speak perfectly clearly. I also suffer from post-traumatic stress and a traumatic brain injury. But you know what? I'm the luckiest person you'll ever meet. Thank you. Thank you. Because of the injury that caused these problems, I'm now far closer with my wife than I ever would have imagined. And I know I'm far stronger than I ever would have thought possible. And I can now put everyday problems in a proper perspective so I can focus on what's truly important to Dahlia and me. Remember, Winston Churchill once said, never give in, never give in. Never, never, never. Now, in the Marine Corps, they train us very hard to be tough and efficient and extremely resilient. Physical and mental fitness is a part of everything we do. That being said, when we deployed to Iraq, remember, I don't come from an infantry background. I'm just one of those weak lawyer type guys. <laughs> no offense to any lawyers in the crowd. <laughs> Probably a lot of them here. Um, when we deployed, you know, I wasn't part of the infantry in my background. And as someone who really described me what it's like to carry two weapons 
you know, I, I forgot to, to when I mentioned uh, my wife, I forgot to show the best picture of my whole slide deck, so I don't want to skip by that. It's, it's the best day of my life. But when, I, when we got to Iraq, if someone had described what it's like to carry two weapons and hundreds of rounds of ammunition and 65 pounds of protective armor and to conduct long foot patrols four or five or six hours at a stretch, all in 100, 110, 115 degree heat, I may very well say I can't do that. But I could, and I did, because we're all stronger than we think we are, and we are all capable of doing amazing things. And it's important to remember this when you're having a bad day, or a bad week, or a bad month, and it feels like your whole world is caving in around you. Because if you dig deep, you're going to find resources you may not have known you had before. The early reports about my injury were that I had been killed in action. And when George first rolled me over, I was no longer breathing. So I know that life can be tough and challenging and full of obstacles. But take it from me. Life is beautiful and precious and something we should treasure, not just get through. I want to think about that for just a second because it's something that I really focus on these days all the time. So you have to turn life's challenges around and fight through them. I did, and each of you can as well. Now, almost nine years later, despite being shot in the head, I just graduated from Georgetown University last year with, with, with honors with an advanced law degree in national security. <laughs> Thank you. I'm an inspirational seeker and a leadership advisor, and I just finished writing my first book about leadership. All because I started focusing on what's truly important to me, and because nine years ago, I learned that we are all stronger than we think we are. And I'm nobody special, so if I can meet the goals that I set out for myself, all of you can as well. I'm certainly not the only person to bounce back from hard times, obviously. So let me introduce to you two friends of mine who I met after I was injured. Like me, they were just going about their daily lives when something incredibly traumatic happened to them. But not only did they overcome their extraordinary challenges, but to this day, they've got amazingly positive outlooks and have helped so many others along the way. This is Kirby Summers, who I randomly met when my wife and I moved to New York City. She was a broker for our apartment. At a very young age, Kirby's father was institutionalized and one of her older brothers committed suicide. Throughout her childhood, her mother physically and verbally assaulted her, and she was sexually molested by her mother's boyfriends. Kirby was date raped and became pregnant at a young age. But that's not the worst of it. 25 years ago, but while she was an adult, a man broke into Kirby's apartment, raped her, and held her, held her at knife point, held her captive, and told her he was there to kill her. Somehow, Kirby escaped after five days, but not before that man literally destroyed everything in her apartment, every picture, every piece of clothing, every memento of her life. And then more recently, in 2005, Kirby was running her own successful business, real estate business in New York City. She went home from work before Memorial Day weekend, and like many of us, couldn't believe the disaster of Hurricane Katrina on the news. And she recognized the looks on many of the faces there from her own experience. Horror, shock, despair. Within 24 hours, Kirby created an online group called the Katrina Home Drive, designed to connect suddenly homeless people with new temporary homes. And not just homes, but the necessities for everyday life, medicine, clothing, food. Kirby told me that after three years of this day in and day out pro bono effort, she and her team helped over 100,000 people. And this is Leo Thorsness, a U.S. Air Force colonel, a Medal of Honor recipient, and a man who spent six long, painful years of his life in the Vietnamese POW camp known as Hanoi Hilton. On April 30th, 1967, Leo was very close to going home. He had just completed that morning his 92nd mission, and the rule there was after 100 missions, you went back to the States. But that afternoon, his plane was shot down. Leo and his backseater co-pilot ejected out of their plane going nearly 700 miles an hour. His helmet was ripped off, and the wind caught his legs and forced his knees straight sideways. 
After they landed, he couldn't walk. But when the enemy caught him, they forced him to do so by beating him viciously until he collapsed into unconsciousness. Leo was, Leo was tortured mercilessly for three years, the first three years there at the infamous Hanoi Hilton. And when he wouldn't tell his captors the information they sought, they would press his, his elbows behind his head and push him forward, causing his shoulders to pop out of their sockets. This is called the suitcase trick because they literally tried to fold you in half. Every day of their lives was visible for those POWs. And for Leo, prayer and his belief in God was a big part of his survival. Now, Leo and, Leo and Kirby are just two people who I happened to meet during the course of my life. And for various reasons, I happened to learn their incredible backstories. So I wonder how many other people I've met in life and how many are here today who have also overcome some of life's toughest challenges. We've heard about cancer a number of times today. How many are cancer survivors? How many have crawled back after the unspeakable suffering from the loss of a child? How many are still recovering from a horrific car accident? For Kirby, she's thrived because of her creativity, by staying focused, and because of her overwhelming desire to survive. She told me that despite all that happened, she was not powerless, and neither are any of us. For Leo, getting through life's most challenging moments was about breaking time into, into manageable chunks, similar to the idea of taking one day at a time. But for him, it was getting through the next 60 seconds, or just 30 more seconds of torture. And when Leo and the rest of the POWs are helping each other, it wasn't if they went home, but when they went home. Life changes, for better or worse. It all depends how you look at it. I choose a glassy half empty, not half full, and to embrace change. I want to live life in the future, not the past. I've learned that through inner strength and humility and a victorious spirit, we are each capable of doing amazing things. I'm not defined by what happened to me in Iraq, but what I've done since then. And I've certainly had my share of dark days since, since my injury. But laying out my life goals and then figuring out the steps it would take to reach them really helped me get back on track. But one thing I know for sure, you are all stronger than you think you are, and you are all capable of overcoming the toughest challenges. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.